back and welcome everybody to BMP Weekly episode 185. It is 31st of October 2022. My name is Jose Ivan and I'm a product manager in the Microsoft 365 platform and in BMP Weekly we'll talk about the latest on the Microsoft 365 areas. Uh, we cover the news from Microsoft and uh, articles from our community and, and we always have a visitor in place. Who do we have a, vi a visitor today? Today okay. we're going to talk with, uh, I don't know, I think he, it still, still count towards a fresh MVP, like two months in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we will, we will be talking to a fresh MVP from Belgium, JC Wagenberg. Excellent. And JC, we already recorded that uh, discussion, good discussion on his career development, how to get an MVP, open source com community stuff and all of that. So really, really cool to catch up with him as well. Uh, in general, please, please, please use hashtag BMP Weekly in Twitter uh, so we find out all of the cool things what you're publishing. Uh, but let's jump on that interview uh, with Chasey and we'll come back on the articles right after that. So welcome, Chasey, on the BMP Hi. Weekly episode uh, 185. I'm just trying to read that from there. Yes. <laughs> it's a squiggy, it's a dash, two round things. Yes. But um, he, uh, so, JC, let's start with the basics. Who are you and what do you do for a living? Yeah, all right. So, hi, my name is JC Wagebart. Uh, I'm a Microsoft 365 consultant at the GMI Group here in Belgium. Uh, what I do on a daily basis is uh, help customers with uh, automation processes within the Microsoft environment. So, mo mainly work on SharePoint itself, set up some tools to help with a, a bunch of document workflows and uh, all that kind of stuff. The main target we actually have within GMI Group itself is a construction uh, construction automa automation. So we have a lot of companies that work in construction and have a, a lot of documents they manage, uh, etc. And yeah, we develop a few handy tools and automation processes that really are useful for them. So that's uh, the main focus uh, I work on during the day. And then afterwards, I'm um, quite active in uh, badminton, so uh, I play a lot of badminton. I also teach the youth, so that's quite fun to see a lot of progression throughout the years. And it's quite fun to follow follow up how they evolve. And uh, yeah, that, that's a lot of fun. And then afterwards, I'm also uh, busy within PMP itself. Uh, that's uh, taking part in the meetings that are planned during the week and then on the CLI as well. So those are a bunch of things I uh, I do. And there's now, one more thing you didn't mention. Uh oh, here it comes. You are an MVP. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. still new, right? It's <laughs> still new, still new. <laughs> and that so, was yeah. from the 1st of September 2022, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So then I got, got accepted to be uh, an MVP, an MS Graph MVP. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> let's let's talk. Well, actually, technically, the category is Microsoft 365 development MVP. Yeah, yeah, so correct. correct. Just... <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but now, uh, can we go back and bit about you? You said that it's is it your company? Is it so? Is it a company consulting company which provides services for building companies? Or yeah, is yeah. It... yeah. So okay. the main focus is is, is indeed in the towards the building companies, but we also uh, talk with other companies like, uh, yeah, not really an example. I can just pick up a, a, a the top of my head, but we are quite open to a lot of companies, but we have main, the main building tools for construction companies that uh, are so most a, interested in us. So it's kind of an industry specific offerings from your company yes. targeted yeah, for yeah, building. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, exactly, okay. exactly. We, we have a lot of tools that, that are really useful for them. There are some few internal processes they do, and we've got some uh, few turkey SPFX web parts that take care of them in just a click of a button, and that's so handy for them. So, uh... so and that's actually, now, what does the click of a button? Sorry, I'm going to trail into this one, because <laughs> that's actually kind of a classical. Because this that's is super... really, really your very pa passionate thing about <laughs> No, no, it's, it's actually, I, I think, because no, of the... No, 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 like 20, 20, 20 years in this space. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> no, yes, kind of. But one, so, so as you're building an industry-specific offerings, what, what does the click of a button mean for building? What, what kind of, what is the add-on what you're providing on top of SharePoint or Microsoft 365? Yeah, so the click of the button can be a lot. The the main, oh, 
what tool does isn't exactly a click of a button, but uh, when you look at the entire process they have to go through before what we do uh, with uh, the help of SPF and uh, SPFX web parts, you can see it as a click of a button, but uh, mainly it's like bundle a whole lot of documents, give them a special naming convention, for example, place them in the correct location, share them with several key users. So behind the, behind the scenes, there's a lot of happening at the same time. Uh, with actually, while the user can just uh, fill in the form and then just click submit, and then a whole bunch of processes start. So yeah. that's in my eyesight a bit of a click on a button. Yeah, yeah, right. absolutely. And maybe, and maybe so uh, to um, expand it a little, right? So the key thing, like the key ability for you to be able to do all of that are basically the APIs, right? The APIs yeah. that you get on Microsoft 365 to be able to automate things. Right, so um, what kind of role, like oh, maybe that there's just like really playing into my own hand, but like what kind of, what role do you see these APIs play in your work? How important are they? And what kind of works so do you only integrate with the APIs or do, do you also extend the UI? Is it more on the part you bring M365 to other apps or do you build extensions that show up inside M365? So from technical point, of you what kind of work do you spend your time doing the most so i like to spend my time researching into the apis because i really find them a key factor they're also open to you uh, they, they've been opened up for you as a developer so i, I feel we got to make use of them i'm i'm not a fan uh, of changing elements that are already there in sharepoint like removing the app bar for example or modifying things like that uh, elements like that i think we need to stay off them and well, with the help of extensions, like adding a new button to a document library, that's all plausible. Now with the formatting as well, you can change the, the where the button is placed. It's all open thanks to the APIs. So then we can start modifying those uh, visuals. But mainly I find it important to s stay with the SharePoint look and feel because the, the, those tools are mainly within SharePoint that uh, we are using. And then, yeah, speak with the APIs and try to get as much done as yeah. possible using those. Now, this is almost like a, a, a questioning your, your what are you doing? What are, what are <laughs> happening? Just bring the truth in. Now, um, but uh, just uh, how does the workflow then work? Well, what kind of, what, how's the automation uh, being happening behind the scenes? Uh, so what does it mean to build a workflow in the Microsoft 365? Obviously me and Wallet kind of know this, but for the, those yeah. this thing. Yeah, do it, so still. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yes, maybe, exactly. You know, there's something so, you need to learn. The main tools we use is SPFX, so we're writing our code within React using the React framework as well. And then we got some open source tools like PMP ES that talks with Microsoft Graph APIs and with the SharePoint API. So that's a very handy tool because we can set up one context to use on several locations and call a lot of APIs. So it's all really structured within React and JavaScript itself, how we call, uh, how we work with the automation processes. And then thanks to the PMPES, uh, we get everything done, like creating document sets or uh, get uh, checking who is the user, uh, currently signed in user and do stuff with that, for example. So those and are then, the main tools. And then do you have any background for back backend processes or anything like Power Automate or not, not a lot. functions so, or? Sometimes yeah. we uh, create some services and that's mainly to build up integrations. So like for example, with CRM, we got an integration to SharePoint to link some documents or some handy tools within SharePoint. So when integration, uh, when we need to integrate something within SharePoint, we are gonna set up some web services. It's gonna be an Azure function, for example, to easily trigger something. Uh, when it comes to mailing, for example, somebody needs to be notified due to mail, then yeah, we'll set up a Power Automate flow because yep. that's the easiest way to set it up. So those tools we're, uh, we're using as well, but we try to start within SPFX because we have a lot of tools available to us uh, there. And then if it gets a bit complex what we're doing or we need really custom APIs or custom modifications, then we bundle everything into a, an Azure function, for example, and host it online. Makes perfect sense. Kind of a typical scenarios, but but still, it's interesting to hear um, how how things are being actually done and automated. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Um, uh, just out of curiosity, is, is your company doing any extensibility then for Teams or any of the other, we're, or is it is it mainly for the collaboration in SharePoint? Uh, not at the moment. So we're looking into it because Teams yep. is becoming a huge part of everything. Um, so we do have a lot of web parts that are uh, single page, for example. So they are, can easily be hosted within Teams as well, and they all have the team variants. So the colors also neatly modify when uh, a user changes their preferences. Yeah. So everything is available to go towards Teams, but we see that our customers aren't actively using Teams at the moment itself. So they're mainly working on SharePoint itself. So that's where our focus is as well. Yeah. But of course, we have got a several use cases where people are like, oh yeah, it would be handy to have it in Teams there or have a Teams up there. So uh, it's definitely uh, starting to uh, to arise more and more. Yep. Maybe do uh, shift gears a little bit, right? So you've been doing this work for for a few years, years already. And then at some point you thought like, hey, this open source thing, I want to give it a try. How did that go? How did you decide to uh, do open source? Yeah, well, uh, that's a good question. Uh, the thing is, I've been working now within the Microsoft 365 stack for around almost three years. So that's not a long time. It's very fresh to all the new uh, the new web bar, uh, new apps and development stuff. But as when I was working for a half year, for I think it was, then I started to uh, join the PMP uh, meetings. So the SharePoint bi-weekly, for example, I started uh, attending those. And I got a lot, well, you always have the intro where there, there's the sharing is caring, for example, you can partake and all the other stuff. And I was like, wow, I'm, I'm interested to learn more. So I took some sharing is caring sessions, for example, also to open source contributing, what uh, you need to keep in the back of your mind. So those helped a lot also. And then I started looking at all well, the PMP group on uh, GitHub itself, just went through several repos, started helping somewhere was quite scary for me at first because I was like, we don't <laughs> want to break anything. <laughs> so I'll start with some simple documentation, for example, and see how it goes and how it goes. And then, yeah, started uh, helping with the web parts. I think it was the controls, uh, SPFX controls, repository, then the CLI as well. And well, I really found the CLI quite fun to work on. So it was also a very active repository. Yep. So I did a lot of things there, and yeah, uh, uh, Waldeck invited me to be part of the maintainer, so that's quite fun to do now as well, just to help PR, uh, review PRs, help uh, users with their problems, with the bugs that come out. So uh, that's a bit how I rolled into the the open source part. So why why is that just trilling it? This is it's really trilling you now on the questions. But <laughs> what does that provide you? So what what is from a personal perspective? What why what what is what is the benefit? Um, because again, we have this discussion classically with a lot of people that uh, why would I do that? Wasting my own time for free for somebody else to do things. So yeah, that's a good point. I don't know if I really have a good answer for that, but it's it's. I get I get really a boost when uh, I'm working on an issue, for example, and then you have another for uh, a new contributor, for example, that comes back with, oh, thank you so much, that helped a lot. It's like really uh, a nice feeling you get from, oh, I really helped that person along with his day, so you can continue using the CLI, for example. It's all all those little things, and then yeah, just creating the new commands, going uh, research diving into new possibilities that's that's just quite a lot a lot of fun for me because i really like uh, teaching myself new elements within the technology stack i'm in and do a deep dive in what are all the possibilities and the cli also talks with a lot of several uh, or a lot of endpoints yep. so you really uh have to be technical about it <laughs> And I, I think one of the things what we talked about in the past, and kind of touched that as well, uh, but like me and Waldek, when we started doing these things, it's, it's also about finding those peers, uh, finding those people who are similar minded and helping and then, yeah. oh, there's, wow, there's other people who like to do this stuff as well. Awesome. Yeah, the community then, around it, the, uh, it's also great, yeah. quite a fun community. <laughs> Yeah. So then, there's nothing fun you, in this. That's, like, <laughs> <what>? <laughs> That's not true. Uh, 
So as someone you would <laughs> you would be more active on on GitHub, on open source, doing different things. And then I think you said beginning September you became an MVP. Yeah. What has changed, if anything at all? Uh, you woke up, you got the email. I and got then... the email. <laughs> well, first I got spammed by Milan, like, oh, you also got the mail, you also got the mail. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't that, know that thing. The, well, another scary thing for me was to then attend uh, several extra MVP meetings that were planned to help with some uh, program groups with the development of the tools and testing new uh, uh, new things they're working on. I find it scary to join that as well because it's like a whole new community you're joining in and you're, well, the newbies, the freshies that's, that are entering. But it's it's quite fun to also... I did it in the past as well. As soon as there is a pre-release or something new on my dev tenant in preview, I immediately started trying to break it. Do whatever is possible, calling all those endpoints, checking what's happening, what are the results. And now they uh, really need, it, need us to do it as well and then provide feedback. So that's a lot of fun to, well, to help with the products and the evolution of those tools. And that actually good to elaborate that a bit for those who do not know. The reason why we ask our MVPs and preview partners to do that is that quite often the, the developers and PMs in Redmond or in the Microsoft organization, they don't necessarily work on a day-to-day -day basis on a customer cases. So therefore, they don't necessarily consider all of the different scenarios, how to break up things. Uh, so it's important that we then use MVPs and our preview partners to validate things. So. Yes, and also, I mean, the audiences to which we cater are really broad, right? Because they vary yeah. from yeah. Uh, one person being ISV, starts starting up new company and idea to an enterprise dev who is working for a top 100 financial company within restricted environment or maybe yep. even, you know, uh, DOD secure environment with different things, right? So it's really broad and there is just... It's physically impossible to know for us internally to know everything about everything, which yep. is exactly why we work together with uh, partners and MVPs, right? To learn from you folks where we can improve, right? Because at the end of the day, we build things for you to use. So you need to tell us where we can do better. Yeah, exactly what we keep on repeating in the community calls as well. Please, please, yeah, please yeah. keep the Provide feedback, feedback coming. Feedback. Because, Very <laughs> exactly. important. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. something doesn't work. Don't chat within your friends and say, Microsoft is bad. No, no, tell <laughs> us so we can address What's that. What's bad? What's wrong? <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Now, um, if as you are a new MVP, what would be like your top three tips for anybody who's looking into, I want to be an MVP, how would I get started? When I grow up, I want to be you. Yeah. <laughs> Not putting <laughs> on the spot at all here. <laughs> Not being as put uh, on the spot, no, no. Well, um, it's quite difficult because for me, I didn't really know what to do to become an MVP. I just started well contributing. I had something. I, I was quite passionate about researching and doing a deep dive on technology itself. So just started on the open source tools. It's a great way to also, like you said, Vesa, provide feedback and help people with uh, the collaboration of everything. So that's one way to to get started is to get uh, enrolled in the community because that's also an important part the entire community and see ways how you can provide feedback how you can help with tools for example and th i think those are yeah well if you're really looking into becoming an mvp are great ways to get started or to get uh more knowledge on how e how everything is working behind the scenes and yep yeah, all <laughs> always coming back to the point of feedback, uh, how you can help everyone for a bit further. Yep. Maybe maybe another thing, right? So you became an MVP and, it's, and I guess at some point you shared that internally with your colleagues at work. Did anything change there, the way they look at you, look up to you? Did anything <laughs> change with regards to the way you interact with the customers now? Anything changed there? Or is it like, no, nah, mm. it's just like we basically are no nonsense, you know, same, same all, same all. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the regard, yeah, it's still been like a month or two uh, at the moment. So there's not, there hasn't been anything spectacular going on or any differences. I do get uh, several questions here and there like, oh, I'm stuck here with this API REST call. Or how did you solve it? Or how would you uh, tackle this one? Uh, those questions do appear a bit more often, but that's, that's about it. So, uh, 
nothing so special. <laughs> <laughs> well, which, which is a blessing and a curse, right? Because on one hand, you get to hear more, but then because you are an MP under under NDA, you cannot share everything. Yeah, and then also, exactly. like on the other hand, like like the blessing part is that you can still you still have the room to do your work as opposed to being overwhelmed with everybody pulling at you from all the different sides. You know, hey, yeah. if you are an MVP, you need to go there and you need to do this and you will be on our uh, uh, posters and marketing <laughs> campaigns. Like, like that oh, happens. I'm here. Like some companies, some <laughs> companies <laughs> choose to do it that way. So, yeah. like, yeah. It's a, some companies do that. So, yeah, at some point, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah depends on. Now, um, JC, how, how did you get to be a developer? What's your background on, on just one day you were like, I'm going to write C Sharp and Murray, uh, TypeScript code and SPFX? How, how well, um, I studied uh, electrical engineering in the beginning. So before I did uh, entered high school, I, I was busy with all the electrical parts. So I was quite fascinated about that. Then I uh, my target was to be an industrial engineer. So I started those studies, but let's say that they, they weren't Where going so go well. <laughs> they, were, <laughs> they weren't going so great. So uh, uh, I did have uh, uh, an, wait. How do how do you say it? Uh, that there was uh, programming that uh, that came with the studies as well, like robotical programming, which really was interesting and uh, which I was quite good at. So I was thinking, yeah, maybe I should look something towards IT. So that's also the year later I switched to IT as well, and then I did my right. three the years. The minor, the studies. major, right? So yeah, yeah. the major yep. you had the minor in programming, and then you you, you took that. Yeah, 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 The major, okay. Yeah, so I uh, swapped my uh, my studies a bit, then went to uh, IT, and then that's how I actually started everything with the uh, development. And then with the studies, uh, I had to do some work for uh, a company, which was in Microsoft, which was in SharePoint, with SharePoint development, and that's how I got in touch with the entire Microsoft environment and how I started developing on Microsoft itself. Cool. How was Boom. that? How easy was oh, it actually first, to get started? Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you <laughs> Getting were under yours, Microsoft. I'll share mine because that is funny. <laughs> well, uh, I, I did the company that I started then in uh, provided a lot of uh, a lot of studies, so a lot of uh, guiding uh, guide la uh, guidance on how to. Uh, start developing with SPFX web parts, the Azure environment, how to host your own Azure function. I was like, I don't know where, what the publish button will do. Uh, how much will I break? <laughs> Azure can be so expensive if I toggle the wrong settings. So well, I'll just leave off, I'll stay off those, uh, so, those settings. So it's been, yeah, the most information I got uh, on the development and to help me uh, guide through this journey is uh, the Microsoft Docs or the Learning Docs is a quite a massive bundle of information that really helps you along with also examples on how to set up your first web page, which I read like several 20 times, for example, before I knew what I was doing. What do they mean exactly? <laughs> no, it's in a positive context because I set up 20 new web parts each time, but doing right. something different. Yeah. Like, how, how do you do it this time? How do you do that time? Well, I missed a section because uh, at the beginning, I'm also like, I'm just going to go through the example. It's too much text for me. But then yep. when time goes through, it's like, maybe I should read what they're talking about here yep. to read get a bit manual. more of insight. <laughs> yeah. yep. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. How, how was, by the way, those documents and, and the guidance and the, the, the videos and all of that? Is that useful, beneficial? How can yeah, very so, useful. Very useful because cool. it's... I, to be quite honest, when I saw uh, the job title or uh, the description, what I should be doing, I had no clue what Microsoft development was. So I was like, I should start programming in Word and Excel. What am I going to do? <laughs> and then as soon as I, as I got on board and they gave me the first talks and they're like, yeah, the first week, just read through this material and you'll get the hang of it. I'm like, Ooh, SharePoint, what's this? Then went playing, created my own dev environment, which was very handy to have as well, to start testing all several yeah. stuff without breaking too much. A lot of stuff got broken, but I, I got it fixed as well. But uh, it's it's That's very handy to have such an onboarding 
uh, experience because there's a ton of videos online, a ton of documentation, blogs, how to tackle certain aspects. So it's very handy to have. Yeah. How did you, I, I don't know if you recall that and, and, and still, how did you go about like, you know, getting a bit of the, the overview? Because like, if you just search, you go to YouTube, you go to Google, Bing, whatever then that you use, and you search for, I want to build X, or you have a task and you want to accomplish X. How do you went about getting the idea of where does that X fit into the Paul M365 large, right? Because like if you build a web part where that is a web part, but that sits inside SharePoint, which has its API and you can extend it. And there's also mm. graph and there are the UI parts to it. There is deployment parts, there's PowerShell. So as you keep unpacking, you kind of get, you know, the Russian dolls, like one fits into another yeah. and then there's this big thing. So how did you go about that idea to zoom out from a very specific task to learning more what you can do at M365 at large? Well, uh, like I said, there are a lot of tools and I also like to challenge myself. So I try to work with a lot of them, try to at least uh, have something running in PowerShell, for example, or to try to tackle several things using several tools. But like you said, there is, there's a whole bundle of languages you can use for us, uh, a bunch of frameworks as well for SPFX, for example. So the I, I try to go quite mainstream with that as well. So uh, the most examples you see in blogs are written in React and TypeScript. So I'll yep. just go with that. Everything, everybody seems to be working with that. So I'll just go with the flow. Like they say, uh, Power Automate, it's like mainly uh, I'll use that when I have to write mails, for example, or some approval flows that's visually more entailing than uh, custom tools, for example. So there's indeed a lot of information and a lot of tools you can use, but I, yeah, personally, I just go, go with the flow, <laughs> go without it, right. without a use. And that's how I've been doing it for the uh, few years. Yep. Makes perfect sense. Now, Waldek, you promised to tell yes. your story related on Colin. arriving oh. at Microsoft. Let's not, let's not miss uh, that. You said, I can tell mine as well. So, because, because <laughs> back, back, so back when I was at uh, school, the high school, was the high school was already a university like back then i would do php dev and the way it works is that you put like all the coders and files you you put them you upload them to uh, uh to apache and basically like in there you have a folder which you map to the host and that is your site so if you go to a url you can get the equivalent on disk and everything's there right so like that was kind of the mind frame for me to build for the web and then i got internship Right. So as my internship uh, assignment, I would do a content migration um, thing on top of uh, SQL Server uh, integration uh, services in 2006. Right. So the SSIIS and I was uh, like all of that went uh, fine. I would build something that would allow you to migrate uh, content from one CMS something to another. And that would that went all fine to the point where I would have like two or three spare weeks at the end. And it's like, hey, like maybe you want to try this. And they gave me a virtual PC 2007 with on it Moss. So that was <laughs> end of 2006, right? So Moss was about to to uh, to be shipped. And I got this VM like I'd never touched IIS in the past. So I, I have this thing. I went to a VM, would start IE. The site is there, and I think, okay, so that maps like IIS is the, the thing where that runs the site. I go in there, empty. Where are the files? Where are the files? Like, I'm seriously like, I had no idea about virtual directories, how you'd map, like, the whole site is in a DLL. Like, all of this, like, I was like, how does that thing work? <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> yeah, seriously, like like you're coming here, like there like there is a file, and if you want to change something, it, the code is just there. You can go through it. You change something, press F5, the change is there, and here you go to a folder, and it's empty. And there's like, how? Like where is that? And only then. So then, I recall I would go to a training by you you to you, and uh, then yeah. I would get to learn everything about everything, like the whole mos stack with. Uh, what was it? Um, 
BDC and the BI stack with reporting services, basically everything, like the whole pie chart in Moss. Yep. And only then, I would st and still, I would be like the first time I recall we would uh, do a project. There was a guy who was more, uh, more experienced than that, and he would do a deployment. Like, and, and he would talk about WSPs and site collections and sites and web. It's like, <laughs> what? Like, what is a site? What is a site collection? Like, like site, a website, right? No, 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 no. And then site collection, like, what? And it didn't really click until I got to look at the code. And it was like, you have SP web and SP site and SP web. I was like, huh, okay. Like, I can find my way around that. And the whole <laughs> WSP and deployment with uh, STS ADM back then, funny times. <laughs> Ah, uh, this makes me then feel really super old. Quickly recapping my thing. Uh, as I was studying, we were studying VP4, uh, Visual Basic 4, and then the natural transition to the website was ASP, and uh, not ASP.NET, ASP. And then ASP. there was an exercise, and, and no, there was a school project which we did for ICL, which got then bought by Fujitsu, was, was based on the WAP. So that was Wireless Application wow. Protocol with a VML, which was wireless markup language, and that was for the Nokia 7110, oh, yeah. uh, which was the green one, you flip the thing and it had yeah, the, yeah. the moving thing. And then we, we did it, this school exercise was basically, uh, as I was studying, we did that like in three months, and it was a, what was it? It was a store where you can buy books back in 2001 on or whatever, uh, on WAP. So you basically connected <laughs> with the because phone. Because everybody did that. <laughs> You were, and you and were I, so I still remember, time. no, I still remember, like, this makes no sense whatsoever. And so you can go here and you can buy computers or whatever. Why would you buy computers How from would <laughs> Why wouldn't you go? And <laughs> How would you pay? Payment wasn't in the involved, of course. Oh, it was yeah, just so basically were, playing around with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, but it was an exercise. So basically you had your shopping basket, uh, you had the storage uh, and, and selection of things. You could have details, you could put it in the shopping basket and all of that. ASP and WML and SharePoint. Like, how did you? Yeah, so so then I got basically recruited by the company and I stopped studying. I did finalize my studies then like a few years later because, you know, and then they, they told, and then I started writing. Uh, they did a training SQL Server 5.5 five, if I remember correctly, and a few others. And then we did a travel booking software for uh, Nokia and a few other travel companies, a so travel company, and we did it. And then that was targeted for Nokia people to do booking. And it was insanely cool, way ahead of its time. It had a corporate servers, which were then communicating with the travel agency servers. Um, between, so there was a, Vistok, what was it? Or no, um, kind of, yeah, yeah, it was, it, it was like, wow, uh, way ahead of yeah. its time. So, and then from there, basically, some of, some of my friends moved to Microsoft um, uh, from that company, and then there was an open position back in 2006 uh, for SharePoint consultant, and I applied, and they knew my background, and it was disclosed that I didn't get in because, you know, I didn't have any experience on SharePoint. Ah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, back then, nobody had because it was, well, well I mean, you could have, 2000, you could 2006, have SDS, yeah, yeah, so yeah, exactly, SDS, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, so. fair enough. But that is an interesting thing because, like, I've done some work in, v, in VBA. Yep. But then, like, back then, I would move more to um, Delphi. Like, that was really the language yeah, that, Delphi. that I would yeah, yeah. use to build yes. on Windows. Yes. Like, not yeah. in C Sharp. Delphi or... doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> I don't know, but does it exist? I, I don't know, no idea. Pascal, <laughs> I, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. I have Delphi, no yeah, clue. Borland <laughs> never heard of it. Is it a thing? No, really? Uh, so back, back, back at the high school, we were introduced to uh, pa Pascal, and, and that uh, was DOS. Last, and is, last Delphi stable. Part, that, was, that was kind of the Windows equivalent of that. Ah. Last day full release is from September 2022. Stable there release. There you go. It's still a thing. I still might my, my, use yep. my skills. <laughs> there we go. Some things don't go away. Yes, we are dinosaurs, and that's pretty sad <laughs> to go through this. <laughs> oh, no, we've done a few things. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah. So, 
unfortunately the WML and WAP was never actually a thing but what was actually funny I have to come back on that we did that school exercise then I got recruited and then was it like one and a half years later somebody internally in the company then pinged me and said so we're now finally looking into doing something for mobile phones and we found <laughs> your code can you help us to understand how to set it up it's like <laughs> nice <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> you probably want to rethink this, but anyway. <laughs> anyway, good, good. Uh, what else? Um, now, JC, uh, we're a bit of a running out of time because we always do this, but what's happening this week? And again, interesting on your calendar or things, what you're doing. Obviously, today, uh, already as we're recording this, there was a new version of CLI 5.9 yep, exactly. is coming out, and that was really cool. Came out. So, it is out already. It's out, yeah. Yeah. What, what what else is happening this week? Let's do a quick round round table. Yeah, well, uh, the main thing I was going to say is indeed the five uh, 5.9 release of uh, CLI. We're also uh, all coming up to the five-year jubilee of uh, CLI for Microsoft 365. So there's going to be a huge party on Discord. Yes. Yes. Uh, Don't tell your friends. <laughs> tell your friends. Is it, so we join. did book the NYC, uh, NYC the, the, come on, the Madison Square Garden. For it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. of yeah. course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> if you happen to be around, you can, you can buy. Yeah. I, yes. I heard from Weldeck that uh, Microsoft is paying us to fly over and then... No, Microsoft, no, 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 so it's, yeah. <laughs> no, Microsoft, no. <laughs> no, no, okay. No. Never mind, never mind. So yeah, uh, that's coming up. That's uh, an event that's going to be, be hosted on Discord. First event that we're going to do there. So we'll see how it uh, how it rolls over there. It's quite, we're building quite up a, com, uh, a big community already. So quite fun to engage with new people and the new contributors as well. So uh, definitely join uh, the CLI Discord, I would say. Yep. Um, that's that's about it. Cool. Well, like, what's on your table? Anything interesting? Um, what's on my plate for this week? Uh, more content. We are going to start the 30 days of graph on uh, from tomorrow. tomorrow. As yep. as as we recording that, so we're we're gonna spend the whole month of November focusing on Microsoft Graph and really trying to fo to help folks uh, become aware of it, right? Because it's like you might use Microsoft 365, but you might not know that you can extend it with apps, and you can build yep. apps that show up inside Microsoft 365, or you can build external apps, desktop, mobile, web apps, and bring Microsoft 365 to it. So we will spend some time with a bunch of folks um basically raising awareness around that like what is it that you can do what kind of cool things you could you could build around that so i think that that will take a majority of the time and otherwise in parallel we will uh celebrate cli from microsoft 365 existing five years already time flies yep. when you're having fun yep uh so we'll be doing that but that that is in a week um other than that content where was it what was the date What's, what's uh, today? November, uh, so I think the date is November 14th, and we will celebrate on November the 17th, if I recall correctly. Yeah, right. Let's double check if it's open. Yeah, 17th, <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> there we go. So, yeah. yeah. Because we didn't well, want to do, uh, do it on Monday, because that, that's just a weird day. Yeah, a weird day. Uh, yeah, today is a weird day. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, yes. On my side, SharePoint Framework 1.16 release candidate comes out probably tomorrow, 1.16, uh, and GA is happening within like a week or so, uh, because there's, I don't think we're running into any problems at this point anymore, uh, which Famous is good. Uh, yeah, exactly. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, wouldn't, wouldn't play the first and, and, and the last time when that happens. <laughs> but community calls, uh, we kind of talk about the Microsoft Crab SharePoint uh, API, Pages API, first time ever uh, publicly tomorrow. Um, now again, today as this is getting released, and that was on the 1st of November, 2022. So. There's a community call happening on there um, and public one. Apparently, I'm, I'm presenting there too, a thing. You are, actually, that's yes, true. Yes, totally forgot oh. about it. Yeah, so <laughs> I will I will present a segment about how you can build some, how you could integrate in your app the ability to find a meeting slot with, with multiple attendees on Microsoft 365 and book a meeting. It's really pretty cool thing. It's not a huge thing, but it's a really uh, nifty scenario that you can implement with Microsoft 365 in your app. Is it that like the, the meetup schedule, the, the find time? Um, APIs kind of scenarios, similar well, thing. Well, kind of, because 
it's different in two ways. With yeah. uh, the with find time, you choose a time slot. And you can go with it across the org, so you can invite external folks. Here, we will talk about what if you want to plan a meeting with folks in internally, and you don't want to go to Outlook and look at everybody's calendar and see where yeah. is the empty slot. So there is an ability for you to tap into the logic that is um, exposed to us through the Microsoft Graph. But more about it tomorrow or today as you or ask. in past on november the past. first <laughs> on tuesday the or um, exactly. i don't know which, which hour gmt it is anyway so a lot of stuff is happening a uh, lot of community calls and please join on our community events uh and and the calls and open source assets and all of that and and um, we'll share the links are obviously in the notes of the blog post as well but thank you chasey uh really cool uh to catch up as well and and know a bit more about your background and, and what you've done and how did you get to be an MVP? That's always yeah. cool. So here. Awesome to be here. Excellent. But thanks, uh, JC. Uh, and we're going to now jump on then on the weekly articles right after this one uh, for those who are watching or listening. Thank, Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Chasey, on the on the great discussion as well. Good to catch up as well. And, and thank you for all the stuff you do for the community. So really, really cool uh, to hear about your journey as well. And and thank you, Waldek, for for helping a lot of lot of people in the getting involved also in the CLI side of the house. It's 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 good that we have a lot of this kind of a post to post project, so to say, so where we can help and onboard people into open source and community stuff. So. Not that CLI is the only one, but it's a good example of a one of those projects which are ongoing. So thank you Definitely. for that. Definitely, and it's and it's a really cool way, you know, for us to because like uh, everything that we do in open source is has multiple uh, purposes, right? Like one yep. is to to create the output that is going to help others, but there's also this other side to it, the way we engage with folks, because for yep. many folks, like that is really their first step in open source and Connection that is going to, to make it yeah. or break it yep. right so it's sure. really cool that 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 we get the chance to engage with them and to show yep. them you know that open source can be really cool really fun really yep. a great place to meet with other like-minded folks and basically learn and grow right Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and and it might be much more difficult to start contributing directly on the Microsoft open source projects rather than community open source projects. So there's, it's good that there are this kind of a, a bit more easier ways of getting involved. So uh, community built community yeah. projects, um, well, yeah, it's I mean, not it's, as it's intimidating. Also... Well, so. yeah, and it's also twofold, right? Because it might be easier because like we do things like samples on the other hand, like there are Microsoft led sample repositories True. too. So True. it's really, it really, at the end of the, the day, it depends what is it that you're after? What is kind of the work you like to do? Um, and maybe also impact, right? Because if you yep. would um, contribute to, I don't know, .NET, SDK, or something else, well, that is being used by millions. So yes, there's more scrutiny for your work, but when it gets accepted, it's also way higher impact because you built something that's going to be used by everybody across the world, yep. right? Absolutely. So it's really, it's not really an either or. I think it's an no, no, no. And, and like and, it's yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's an onboarding channel to getting involved. It, it, it's it's but yeah. So there's a multiple channels of getting involved by contributing samples and then uh, having in involved in the projects and then maybe contributing in .NET framework. Who knows? Um, but again, yeah, or maybe um, building the next big thing. Who knows, exactly. Right? Exactly. Who knows? Absolutely. But but having those opportunities for the community to feel welcome. Um, and and having that guidance in place and welcoming a uh, team in place, um, so don't help for sure. So really, really cool. Now let's jump on the on the weekly articles, should we? Yeah. Yes. Let's do that. No. No. Let's not do nope. that. No. No. Uh, it's uh, Monday. Yes. No. <laughs> let's do that. Let me share my screen and let's go through some of the articles. Not not a massively busy week actually. Uh, I get, I think we're still like a few weeks after the ignite uh, time period, so there isn't a massive amount of announcements, but quite a few cool things as well. So first of all, uh, there's a uh, updated version and updated preview of SharePoint Framework 1.16, uh, which is in it's scheduled now to go GA in November. So within a week or so when we are recording this. Uh, and the key points here is for sure uh, is the, the fact that you can actually start extending the SharePoint Framework solutions to Outlook and Microsoft 365 app. See, I'm learning, not Office.com, oh, yeah, Microsoft yeah, 365 yeah, yeah. app. Very good, very good. Uh, so not only to uh, SharePoint, Microsoft Viva and Microsoft Teams, but also 
also the this new areas as well. And it's a great, great, great opportunity of basically resurfacing the existing investments. Or if you are targeting uh, just Microsoft 365, building your stuff using the SharePoint framework and then surfacing that in multiple locations. So really, really cool. And then, of course, there's a lot of uh, a focus on the Microsoft Viva and given the Microsoft Viva Home, which we will see actually in other, other news of the, this week as well. Uh, there's a new opportunity for building extensibility and that, that's something what we will tell a bit more as part of the 1.16 release and, and more scenarios coming up as well. But really, really cool stuff, continuous involvement of things for sure. So, and we'll, we are looking into having a release candidate this week and then GA uh, after that. So awesome. that should be happening cool pretty soon as well. Now, we did also have a good blog post from Tomomi Imura. What was this about? Exactly. So she goes through a use case. How would you build a command bot for Microsoft Teams that rolls a dice. I mean, like the example is not something you would build in your work, but it, it's meant to show you the mechanics of it. How would you use Teams Toolkit step by step to build a bot to which you can send a command like roll a dice and it will give you back a number between one and six. At least I assume that that is a one to six. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It yes. is. There yes. you go. Because like it there are be. dices, there are four four number dices, there are twenty side dices, twelve side. It would dices. be nice to have seven, just just to mess up people. I haven't you know. seen seven. <laughs> I saw four, six, <laughs> eight, ten, twelve. Yeah, I don't think you can easily 20. have seven, which is. I don't know if you can the... have a septagon. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Good, good. Uh, pretty good. A hundred uh, sided dice. There you go. That it's it's in the article. A hundred sided dice, <laughs> which is possible because it take it. So you take two tens, and you throw one for the tens and the other one for the singles. Yeah. And then yeah. that gives you a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Fair point. Fair point. Yeah. Fair point. Aha. Good point. Ha ha. Now, we also had an update uh, related to Microsoft 365 developer program, which was suspended for a while uh, for the new tenants. The program itself has been executing and existing tenants been working, but there was a delay on the getting new tenants in place. That's been now enabled again. And then apparently there was some sort of a, a mistake somewhere in the pipeline, whatever, and that any uh, if you have created any instant sandboxes, on or after September 2013th, uh, you will need to recreate uh, that tenant. So uh, I, we do not know exactly what are the technical details behind this, but okay, let's recreate it and you'll be good to go. So it's it's cool to have anyway that opportunity in place to, that you will get a free Microsoft 365 dev tenant for playing our things. Yeah. Now, on the Power, Plat Power Apps and Power Platform side, there was a cool announcement around co-authoring in Modern App Designer. Exactly. And people have been asking for this for a long time, right? Because it's as nice as it is to be able to build an app by yourself, oftentimes, especially if the app is bigger, you want to be able to work with others on the same thing. So apparently now we have announced a, I think it's preview, right? Is that, yes. So it's a public preview of the ability to co-author a power app. So you can build, as you can work on a single power app with others at the same time, which is really, really cool. So that's something that uh, folks have asked for already for a long time, and now it's, yep. now it's available. So I guess if you're in this space, if that is a um, relevant thing for your work, two things, give it a try and tell us what you think, especially yep. that last part is critical for us to be able to improve it to your needs, right? Yep. So definitely Absolutely. give it a try and reach out to the team behind it to tell them what you think. Yep, Absolutely, really, really cool. Um, and also, Considering the fact this is not an easy thing to do, again, because you can have multiple people doing edits at the same time and the same control and all of that, so all of that logistics in place, it's it's not a it's Ending like why can't you just have uh, so exactly don't, don't exactly the chain. yeah it's, yeah it is it it's it isn't not trivial. a simple it's not a trivial thing to do so really, really luckily cool. we have smart people working at Microsoft who can solve that these is, issues. That is true. That's true. Yes. Now, we also had a Power Apps announcement related on general availability of Power Apps ideas. And this is really for the for I, providing that ideas, for example, for formulas and, and structures uh, for your support. So having artificial intelligence in place to make it easier to then build, for example, string manipulations and, and yeah. JSON structures and all of that. So really, really cool. Uh, awesome stuff. Um, in other great, words, great you can you, you can ex express in English what is it that, that you want, 
and tooling behind it will change that into a pattern yeah. detection or formatting. So you don't need to learn the language of the computer, but instead you can basically express in your plain language, like, like how do you think about it yep. and have AI reverse engineer that from your speech or from your text to the way computer understands it. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Really, really, really cool stuff. We also had a, a uh, blog post related on the Maker community uh, a site creation uh, with the new Power Platform community site template. And this is something which was actually announced a while back already. And this is just a blog post from Daniel Laskovic uh, related on what's available, how does it actually work, and, and what's the value out of that template. And this is actually kind of a cool uh, combination of multiple things. It is taking advantage of the open source BMP uh, provisioning engine behind of the scenes uh, to automate a site structure, which can be then used within your company as the maker community for Power Platform. So Really, really cool stuff. Thank you for Daniel for that. Uh, CLI had a new version as well, 5.9. Definitely, definitely. And I'm really impressed with the hard work everyone has done. I think we merged. I, I, don't, I don't know if this is the biggest release ever that we had with regards to the number of PRs that we merged. Because like we took part in the Hacktoberfest, which yep. is basically the whole month of October everybody is submitting PRs and if you submit four that are that are accepted you either get a, a t-shirt or a tree will be planted in your name right so we took part in that and boy we got a um, huge huge number of PRs and also it's a cool thing if you look at the list of new folks yep. like, these, these are just new folks who decided to work with us just the past month this is insane this is really impressive Right. Yep. And really to see the energy of everybody on a team doing their best to get the PRs through as quickly as we can, just to get them on, on time, basically to, to recognize people's work and work with them basically from, from anything, from small adjustment to docs, to refactoring, to code base improvements, to new commands. It's really, really cool to see. And here in the article, we kind of give a high level uh, overview of the things that, that have changed, but really sorry. like go to the... Uh, here we go. The release Sorry. notes, yep. uh, right? And check out the full log because a lot has changed. Um, we have a lot of enhancements, improvements, right? And also another thing that I want to share is that in November, we're going to work, we're doing the final work on V6. So we've worked on V6, which is new major version already for a few months. And it, and as it has been already available for everybody to test, we are going to break a few things. Right. That's the way things are. Like once a year, we take the room to break things. We give you, we hope that we give everybody uh, enough time to test it. Yep. But in uh, this month, November, is going to be the last month that V6 is in preview. It's going to ship at the end of the month. So if yep. you use CLI, definitely take some time to test everything you want, like your scripts, your things, because Maybe there are a few small adjustments you need to have, and we will have a guidance that tells you exactly what has changed from where to what, just to make that update step for you as easy as we can, but definitely take time to look at it. Yep, absolutely. Really, really cool stuff. Now, uh, there was also an update from you related on uh, this scenario uh, on finding time and schedule a meeting in Microsoft 365. Exactly. So the last week I spent some time to work on a simple case, right? Like imagine you have a work app and in this app, you want to have kind of the same ability as you have in Outlook to invite a few folks to a meeting. And imagine that you have a, a project and you want to have a sync with the team. Well, normally what you would do is you would go from your project tracking app to Outlook have two windows side by side, invite everybody from one to the other, check out the calendar. Like, why? Isn't there a better way? Well, apparently there is. Using the Microsoft Graph, we can simplify that whole um, experience a lot. So in yep. the article, I'm going through a few key points, but there's also a link to a fully functioning app, which I would definitely recommend you to try. Clone the, the repo, press F5, run the code, and see for yourself how cool it works. Yep. And if you happen to watch it already on November the 1st, in the afternoon European time, I'm going to give a demo on the M365 platform community call, how I went through building that, how it works, and highlight a few key things. So if you have the chance, join me there.
Yep, absolutely. And if you're watching this later, of course, that demo is there recorded be and available in the in the yeah, Microsoft 365 community YouTube channel. So really, really cool. Now, uh, Mark D. Anderson has been focusing on this magical sorcery called content types uh, recently, uh, which are enabling people to do metadata and, and how they actually work. Um, the reason why I'm actually kind of making the, the, the sarcastic sorcery uh, comments. We were having a chat in one of the social media uh, media uh, channels uh, within the, during the weekend related on introducing and talking about the content types, which is, of course, has existed for a long time, but a lot of people don't actually know the value out of the content types um, and how you can inherit and what does it actually mean and how does it actually work. So thank you, Mark, for explaining that. And in this case, really focusing, for example, on the explaining the how we inherit from the organization, inherit the document, organizational base document at required metadata and then from there we can inherit the contract and so on and so on and that will then make sure that you have the structural metadata in your documents which you can then surface in search you can do it in multiple other areas as well so really really a great blog post related on explaining how things are actually working some familiar goods here as well so you know yeah so. and, and actually the mechanics of it how it all works with in, <laughs> with inheritance yep. oh good old days yeah good <laughs> uh, were they really good were they yes, were they really definitely were they? definitely i liked it <laughs> Now, uh, uh, Daniel uh, and Daryl had a new episode on the Microsoft uh, 365 Message Center show, uh, and then and this one they focused, of course, the latest announcements in the Message Center, and then uh, the new home experience in the Viva Connection desktop was really the focus area on here, uh, which we said that it's actually coming. We provided some updates related on uh, availability of that one, so that was really to focus on on this one. Again, the show from Daniel and Daryl is a great way of staying up to date on. What are we announcing? What's in the roadmap? What's in the message center? Because message center is the way for us communicating for tenant administrators what's coming in their channel. So there won't be exactly. surprises. Now, then Michael Mendes had a blog post around Power Platform, Power Apps. Exactly. How you can build powerful adaptive card experiences for teams using cards for Power Apps. So a lot of things to kind of unpack and understand what it goes. But the idea is that I think this is about build using the new ability in Power Platform to to to, to use adaptive cards. Yes. And then yes. the way we, which I we announced it, in the Power Platform conference. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, Power Platform conference in Orlando like a month ago, we announced this to be available. Yeah. So but really, uh, the, the feature is now available and you can actually start using that. And, and Michael goes through the different scenarios and how, how does it actually work and what's available and really, really cool stuff as well. So it, it's awesome to see these applications getting more and more connected between each other. So rather than isolating, no, no, it's all connected. Uh, yeah. This is a really good example of that. Now, from Niklas Wilhelm. So um, and there was a, a nice blog post in HubSite 365 on SharePoint lists to ER diagram. So basically how you can draw a, a dynamic uh, drawings and relationship between a SharePoint list. And he has a awesome looking web part on it uh, in a GitHub. It is pending also on getting processed on the the central sample gallery. Uh, we, we have a small delay there, which we are uh, working on addressing, but basically a really nice web part to be available to get a nice visual presentation of the relationships. So really, really cool stuff. Thank you, uh, Niklas, on that one. Then there was an announcement from the H2O team. Exactly. So H2O is community-driven uh, implementation of the Microsoft Fluent Design. Fluent Design? Flu Fine. Yeah, Flu fluent design. Yeah, it's fluent fluid. Like these two <laughs> always like which one is which. So it's no. So it's fluent uh -huh. de de design. Uh, and there was an update. So there are new features, new abilities with H2O. So if you build something where you need Microsoft's UI in your app, have a look at it. Check, yep. check it out because it might just have the few things that you might need. Absolutely, absolutely. And they will say uh, both the the CSS HTML version and the React version were released. So they're both available um, uh, with a latest update. So this one is specifically for the React version. Thank you for that. Now, uh, Paolo Pialorsi from PSS had a new episode 228. Am I reading that correct? Yes, sir. Um, yes, you extending, 
<laughs> extending Azure AD objects with Microsoft Graph and Open Schema extensions. And, and again, he's been having the series related on schema extensions on different areas and then walking through the different options and scenarios, uh, what you can actually do there. Thank you, Paula, on the latest uh, videos on this series. Pretty, really, really cool. Then we had a video from uh, Luca uh, Giuliano De Luca about how to create a Power Platform hub or community in SharePoint. Now, the question is, what does he exactly mean with a Power Platform hub? Is it based on the Power Platform template or the hub template yes. that we yes. talk, yes. talked about? Okay, so Precisely how do you go about it? How yes. do you go about using that template in your environment to create a place where Power Platform, where people who use Power Platform can work together, share ideas and so forth and so on. Yep, and, and this is working through the, the what's available, where's the assets and also uh, uh, how to install that. So what do you need to actually do to get it uh, up and running uh, within your environment? So what are you, the installation sequence and all of that. So thank you, Juliana, on that one. So really, really cool uh, stuff for sure. And then uh, the last thing was from Shane on QR codes and Power Apps. So how to create, how to download, uh, make them PDF and then email. So basically focusing on on a typical scenario with QR codes. Um, so you might use them for easier, let's say, access on URLs or text or code and so on. So really cool uh, demo uh, from Shane on that one. Thank you for that. Cool. That's all for this week uh, on the articles. Uh, pretty slow week, uh, but again, we're two weeks after Ignite, so that I guess that's kind of understandable. There's always a bit of a break after that because there's so much getting announced. Um, I mean, in, in a way, it is great because we give people room to catch up with everything that has been announced. Sure. You know, sure. give it a, a thought, think about like how does that fit in their work, if at all. You know, so in a way, it's it isn't really bad like it's kind of this you know this flow and ebb of new things and then a bit of down, down, downtime to think about yep. what is new and coming yep absolutely absolutely now we already went through what's happening this week i guess we are starting to be good to go so we could talk about what's what's going to be the week after that because or the I, week I after have no that. idea yeah or the week no after idea. that <laughs> pretty soon actually the week after that week after that week after that it's thanksgiving <laughs> there we go Okay, I know. It's not know. a thing here in the Netherlands, so <laughs> it's, it's not like a thing it's, here. It's, it's, yeah. it's a big well, thing now, in the US, but now it will impact significantly my day-to-day -day life. But it's not a big thing in Finland either. So, and that's the <laughs> having a free Thursday. You know, free Thursday evening. It's just amazing. <laughs> no meetings. That's a free Thursday. Exactly what you what you said. It's like it's every every Thursday. It's a free Thursday evening. Yeah. <laughs> true, true. And then we'll it's have the best. black. And then we'll have the Black Friday, of course. Um, so there's a classic joke in in uh, this meme going around in the internet. Just a final joke, where it's it's basically in Finland we have the Black Friday every single Friday from October to March. So, yes, because it's <laughs> night, right? But on the other hand, I must say that it was nice to wake up because so we went to the winter time, so the clocks went an hour yeah. back last yeah. weekend, and it was nice to wake up today to a daylight. I was like, oh. um, yeah, so, but then for the downside work. of this one, I was checking this from the phone, sunset in Helsinki today, guess on what time? Uh, 3 p.m. No, oh, but 4.26. <laughs> 4.26 weather, so let me, let me check what is the sunset. On PMP Weekly, we can tell you things about the weather. <laughs> so the sunset here is quarter past, past uh, five. Well, that's not actually, that's surprisingly close. I was thinking that there's a bit of a um, 45 minutes later, but that's, a, that's, that's pretty sad, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, if you so imagine, right, like before we worked into the, before we went into the way we work, you would often, like I would have days where I would leave to work in the dark and yes, come back exactly. home in the dark. That's and you're dark, like, yeah. where's the day? Like you basically, yeah, true. Like the whole day is gone. So now being being able to work at home and being able to, you know, take a break. Exactly. Like you want to go out. It's dry. They, like the weather is good. You want to go out. You you go out now because yep. it's it's daylight as opposed to you being out the whole day. And then True. well, there's True. like you can go out in the dark. True. True. It's it's much more flexibility for sure. Anyway, thank you everybody for watching. And next time we'll talk about the weather in Alaska. Who knows? Maybe I don't know. Or whales in Iceland, or maybe I don't know. Uh, so, <laughs> but that's.
but thanks everybody and for watching and listening and we'll be back with the new pmp weekly within a week cheers everybody bye-bye thank you bye